Hello friends, I'm Shauna, welcome to the channel, and today we are going to be swatching all of my blushes, bronzers, and highlights. Forgot a blush, right there. So those are all of my blushes, and we're going to be going through those first, simply because I think those are the most interesting. As for my highlights and bronzers, etc., right here are my highlighting products and then here are my bronzers that is everything else and we'll get to those at the end i oh, i have been considering how to swatch these if i want to swatch them by color or formula and i'm thinking i want to do it by formula type subsetting by color. I feel like that will be the most interesting or more so applicable. So I'm going to do the orangey types of colors first, simply because I think there are just fewer of those. Okay, I have about five blushes in the nudie brown category, or more like orange nude brown, and they're all a little bit different. So we have Patrick Ta, She's So LA, and then we have Salty Siren from Nude Sticks. This is more coral, so we'll put her at the end. I also have Melba by MAC. And then I have Glossier Cloud Paint and Dusk. And then my Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur Blush and Blurred Buff. I'm trying to think of how to swatch these in the most aesthetically pleasing way. Okay, well, we're just going to have to start. Otherwise, I'm just going to be sitting here for hours. Okay, here we are. Let's, let's go in with glossy first. Now, I am left-handed, but we're going to be doing it on with my right hand simply because it's going to be the easiest. Okay, so here's dusk on the finger. This is going to be a really juicy swatch. Look at that. I can't get over this color. Every time I swatch this, it just brings me so much joy, even on the face. It is so flattering, even the formula. Next up. We're going to do our bare minerals. Let's get a nice swatch a there. I did clean off my finger in between the swatches. It's no surprise that I love both of these because they are just so similar in color. And I haven't spent a lot of time digging my finger in this. It's a very interesting texture that's hard to explain. It does feel creamy when you touch it. Okay, not creamy. It does feel like a cream when you touch it, but it's such a sophisticated formula. It is a cream to powder. So, my oily skin friends out there can wear this, but also so can folks who have dry skin. I didn't fully realize how similar these two colors were until I just swatched these right here together side by side because I've never done that. And I think you can see how 
slowly, I mean, we did a really thick juicy swatch, but this is setting down and mattifying slowly. I think it's looking or it's looking to be more mattifying than it actually is in real life. What beautiful colors. Next, let's do the Patrick Ta blushes. We'll swatch them both together, side by side. And then we'll do, so we'll do, this is one swatch, this is one swatch, and then we'll do a combo. And I think the more you play, or the more I'm playing with cream formulas, the more special this one is, because when you, when I just put my finger in here, it's a little bit sticky to the touch, but it feels more like a balm. And then when I'm, you know, touching the Bare Minerals blush, it's much softer, not as creamy for sure, not as, yeah, not as creamy. It's such a unique texture. I think maybe similar, like the most similar thing to, to think about it or to describe it as would be like a super shock. Not quite like a super shock, but of that variety. And this is instant color payoff. This, I feel like this is gonna be the best swatching powder blush. Look at how similar all these colors are. I am a little surprised actually as to just how, how similar. Now let's go with the last two shades that are much more coral. Like I think we'll notice just how different they are when we swatch them, but I don't have other corals. Nothing else here is, is coral. It's all nude. So we're going to just go with it or maybe, okay. This, so this may be going with bareback. No, they're different. Okay, let's go in now with Salty Siren from Nude Sticks. I mean, that was one swipe. Wow. I always knew that this was an opaque, beautiful blush, but I think that swatch just really proves it, to be honest. Now let's go in with Melba. Okay, so here are all of my warm, toasty tones of the blushes. Melba definitely falls more in line with this category than Salty Siren does, but I kind of knew that right off the bat. And one thing I think maybe you should note here is the color change 
with Glossier, it does oxidize a little bit and it becomes more uh, orange than when I when you first lay it down. Looking at the first couple of shades, I'm a little surprised, honestly, because I did think that these colors were more unique than they actually are in reality. What makes them unique is really the formulas. They are all very distinct formulas. I don't regret having all three of these in my collection, but I definitely understand why I mean, I have a type, you know, but I understand why I'll use one and then neglect the other two is because the overlap is really similar. I'm thinking that the color payoff on this is, is actually way more opaque than I realized as well. And when it comes to the Patrick Ta blushes, they really, <laughs> you know, you get that two in one. So it's not necessarily like they're identical. This one is the most similar to the other two, but then you have this bronzer or sorry, this blush that is way more brown. And then the mixtures of course can be a little bit more orange or brown depending on how much you put in. Are you surprised by any of these swatches? <laughs> Let me know. We're going to move on to some of the, I think we'll go to some of the, we'll go to nude, nude to me colors, and then we'll go to reds next. Okay, so I think here we'll do Bareback, Rare Beauty Blush in Nearly Neutral. We have Pat McGrath Blush in Flirtation, or Flirtatious, sorry. We also have Tarte Party. And then we have Mac Mocha. I'm thinking maybe if this, if this, this is Burt's Bees in shy pink, if this should be in this category or the next category. I also have, she's this blush here, this pink too, these two. I think are gonna be a little similar. We'll I guess have these as wild cards and see how it goes. So we'll start with our creams. Or does it even matter? Cause I'm not thinking that it matters. We will, however, start with bareback. I've described this as a lipstick, as a blush, because this is the kind of tone that you would normally see as a lipstick, which is why I love it so much as a blush. And I actually have used it on the lips and the cheeks. And Nude Sticks right on the packaging says that you can use this on the lips as well, so it is safe. This to me is such a unique, not a unique, a versatile blush color. And I, I love this formula. And out of the two that I currently have, this one is the one that gets the most use. Let's now go to Flirtatious. And I'm wondering just how different it would be because I mean, they look really similar. Okay, that barely swatched. Are you seeing this? There we go. It took a while, but you know, we got some color payoff. They are very similar. I mean, very different formulas. 
But one of the reasons why I think the nude sticks color works is because it is matte. Okay, let's now go to the Rare Beauty blush in Nearly Neutral. I am, by the way, cleaning off my fingers in between the uses. They're both clean. Another very similar color. But it does look a little bit different once you swatch it. And one of the unique, I like this formula because it does kind of become balmy once you put your finger in it and then it does set down as well. This is certainly a more nude shade, but it's more red toned. Still beautiful, and I think the red the redness in this blush is one of the reasons why I go for it as more of a springtime blush. It's definitely a sophisticated formula. Let's now go to Tarte Party. I have a feeling this is going to swatch better than Pat McGrath. Okay, so this blush is warmer than everything that we've tried so far. I'm actually surprised as just to how warm this blush looks in, you know, on the skin versus in the pan. So one of the things that are standing out so far is just how many amazing creamy formulas are at Sephora or in higher end brands. I only have one cream blush from the drugstore that I'm going to be showing in this video. And I think that really sophisticated or unique blush formulas is what higher end and brands do really well and what I think I would pay money for if I'm going to buy something higher end. What I'm trying to say is if I'm going to spend a high end price point on a blush, it's going to be for formula over color. Depending, I'm actually curious to see how these drugstore powder blushes are going to swatch because my my instincts are telling me that they're going to swatch just as nice. And if that's the case, buying higher end powder blushes is something I think I want to be more cognizant of in the future simply because powder blushes aren't hard to formulate. So what exactly is a higher end brand charging me for if it's not for a sophisticated color or formula? Maybe if the color is super unique, but again, is this color here really unique or this color? Are either of these particularly unique? I don't think so. They do, you know, the formulas do feel different but we're ultimately talking about a powder blush here. So let's now swatch Mocha. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna swatch the Burst Beast blush because it is looking wildly similar. And I wanna know just how similar Shy Pink is to Party. And then we'll swatch the rest of them. Okay, this is looking I mean, come on. Those two are so similar. When I bought Shy Pink, I don't think I fully realized just how similar it is to party. I think, I think party in the pan to me just looks much more neutral than how it swatches. And I do think that the formulas are really similar just in terms of how they actually feel on my fingers. No way you'd be able to tell these two apart. And I'm now thinking that my Franken blush is gonna look 
similar as well. Uh, I've had requests from you guys to swatch this. So let's do this now. These are three incredibly similar blushes. Incredibly similar. Let's now go for, let's now swatch Mocha. Just wiping off my hands here. Oh my God, these are all looking the same. And I also feel like I'm exposing myself for believing colors and formulas are different when they're not in reality. Okay, so let's get a good swatch in. Apparently no swatch. What the hell? Do you see? Um, just when I'm looking at these, the Tarte Party and Mac Melb or Mac Mocha are the most similar, but then also when you this is the Hourglass blush. This one has sparkles to it, which I don't. I'm not sure if you could see it in the swatch, but I think you could see it on the, the face for sure. This one is definitely the most hot pink of them all. It's in some ways the most distinct. These three, one, two, three, are looking basically identical. Here's the problem I'm facing with these blushes because now I'm looking at them and I'm like, wow, these are so similar. Maybe I declutter one. And here's, I guess here's what the struggle is. When it comes to mocha, look at this thing. I have destroyed it because this thing gets hard pan. Who am I going to give this to? Nobody. I then have this giant <laughs> Franken blush. Again, who am I going to give this to? I need to use this. This Tarte blush is broken. Who am I going to give this to? You know? So the blush that I could potentially give away is the Bird's Bees, but this one is the most distinct and I like, I like all of these blushes. So I guess I keep them all for now. So here's how I'm feeling about this particular color category. I was right about the drugstore blushes, the Burt's Bees blush swatched just as nice as all the other ones, all the other powder blushes. And if anything, the MAC blushes have swatched the worst. Swatches don't necessarily tell everything when it comes to blush formulas and how they apply or look on the cheeks. So I can at the very least say that. We have a lot of overlap and the unique colors here are not the powders, but these guys all up front, which are all basically my creams. Well, these two are creams. Okay, so do with this information what you will. I do like my Pat McGrath blush, and a lot of the reason why I like it is the high-end luxurious feeling I get when I use it. You know, the pan is embossing, the packaging is high quality. It feels more luxurious than when I pull out my MAC blush and it actually performs better honestly than my MAC. Maybe not so much more than my Burt's Bees. I would say yes it does but I think I don't know how much I would notice when it's on the cheeks but packaging here does play a role and you know, that is part of the price point. But I don't think this particular formula is super unique revolutionary out of this world and I can say that as well about the color. I feel a little silly looking at all these colors on my hand right now, but there are some formulas in here that I do really love. And the more I swatch colors, the more I've come to really love this Nude Sticks formula in specific. It's really standing out, man. Okay, it's time for the last category. So we have four colors in this last category. We have my Merit Blush in G2 
cheeky. We have my Annabelle Perfect Butter Blush in Bush Rose. This must be a typo. No way this is supposed to be Bush Rose. I then have this blush from Lara. This is a Revlon Charmed Enchantment in 150. And then my Patrick Ta blush. <laughs> These are all the same color. My God. <laughs> Okay, let's just let's just go. Okay, let's, let's just let's just watch them all. Let's start off with this one from Lara. It's very smooth, buttery. This is gonna be a thick, juicy swatch. Are you ready? This is fabulous. I really like the feeling of that. Let's put it beside the Merit blush. The Merit blush is definitely more red, or at least that's my take. It's kind of a chunky swatch. Let's do this Annabelle blush next. Then we'll end off with the Patrick Ta. Oh, this is so silky. Did you see that? Tell me you saw that. This is an absolutely underrated formula. Oh my God, that was amazing. That has to be the best powder blush swatch so far. I mean, Patrick Ta is probably close, but that was amazing. That was incredible. And if you, okay, we'll, we'll finish up with the Patrick Ta and then we'll talk about them. These colors are dead on dupes. So now, wow, that blush really did feel like the Patrick Ta formula. Wow, 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 wow. Now let's do the combo color. Before anybody comes for me for the way I put on those Patrick Ta blushes, the packaging does say to put the powder on first and then the cream. I wouldn't do it like that in real life. You can, and I showed you in the first one about layering them, but in real life, I would want to powder them down. So these colors up front are more berry, and then these colors at the end are more red. Can you tell the difference in these last four and what I swatched? No, because they're so similar. Granted, you know, these two are in the same palette or these three are all part of the same palette. But what I've noticed is that the color difference, let me just pull it out. In my opinion, these two colors are the exact same, except in different formulas. These two colors are not. So I think that's just interesting to know. I think that this, if you're looking for a blush product that, you know, you can have your items go a long way, 
This one, I think you could get more like three colors, whereas this one is just like one color in multiple formulas. Yeah, there's a use for that, but I think that's just something to know. Let's do the highlighters next and we'll finish on the bronzer. Here they all are. We have Becca Opal. Guys, I repressed this and it's already broken. We have Vesca Moonlight. We have Mac Double Gleam. This I'm going to put at the very end because this is a finishing powder, but it feels more highlight to me. This is in the shade light. And then this is a ColourPop color. I'll have to pull it out after and I'll put the name on the screen. So let's go in to Becca first. My favorite highlighter of them all. Look at that. Look at that. There's a reason why this is a favorite. I'm sorry, but this is perfection. Let's uh, do Vesca Moonlight next. It is similar, but a lighter color. And honestly, it doesn't feel as nice as Becca, which is not all that important, but I mean, I like this one as well. Out of all the highlighters I own, this is probably my second favorite, but then again, I don't own that many highlighters. Double Gleam. I have uh, roasted this recently. You can really see the color difference when you compare them. We'll do this color pop next and then we'll end with the this one simply because it's not technically a highlight. Now, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but I can definitely see it in person. This looks chalky in person. This one is a very similar tone, maybe a little bit more silver, and it's looking less chalky in person. Now let's do the high glass. So here's the thing, guys. Um, this has not changed my opinion on anything. If anything, it really shows me how amazing the Becca formula is. I think the next best would be this formula followed by ColourPop, Double Gleam, and then the High Glass. But again, the High Glass isn't totally a fair comparison because it's not technically a highlighter. But I really wanted to just put it in to see if it would be more like a highlighter or a powder. And I think it's definitely a mixture of both. So I think they have the name right on that one. While you can see the subtleties and the difference of these formulas, I don't really think other than Becca, like if you were to put these three on the face, I don't know that you would really see a difference in them, at least for me. And I'm not a big highlighter person as well. So I mean, I don't foresee myself getting more highlight and I was curious what I would find when I would swatch them. I'm pleasantly surprised by how they swatched and this just really solidified my own opinion that I don't want more highlighters. 
So this is a really nice little experiment and a good end result from these swatches. Now I'm just gonna continue on up my arm with the bronzers. I've never arm swatched a bronzer before. Like I'm not ever really swatching bronzer, so this is interesting. This is the Vesca bronzer in Kiss by Santorini. That actually swatched really beautifully. It's a really velvety formula, this guy here. Like it's really soft and like it picked up really nicely on my fingers. Like I don't have much complaints about that. Let's swatch my other bronzer. I only have two bronzers right now. Let's see the comparison. Wow. Wow, they feel really similar. And they look really similar too. The undertones are slightly different and this one does have a slight shimmer to it, but they feel incredibly similar on the finger and they look similar. I think if you enjoyed Kiss by Santorini by Vesca, they're going out of business if you can't get it anymore. The City Bronzer in the shade 200 would be a close dupe, both in color and feel. You ready? Well, okay then, that was super fun. I enjoyed that. Definitely a different experience overall than my eyeshadow palette video. That one, I wasn't really looking for dupes. I was just more so interested in seeing how everything swatched and, you know, kind of the actual feel of the colors and the textures and the formulas. This one, I think in my mind was more of a comparison video, comparing all of the colors together. It's okay. I feel like I have five different colors of blush and then everything else is repeat. So if you're feeling bored of your makeup collection, why don't you go give your colors a swatch because, or your items a swatch, whatever kind of category you might be feeling bored of, because you might just have a lot that's duping each other out that you didn't realize. And I did not realize just how similar so many of my colors are. While I'm certainly not feeling bored of my makeup collection, like I re I'm, I'm really not, I think one of the reasons for that is because I have so many unique formulas. Let me just highlight a couple. You have the Patrick Ta blushes, which are over, I'm just gonna open these because I don't want that, the glare of the product. <laughs> So you have two really unique to me formulas in my collection. We're not call them colors, but formulas. Then I have two super unique nude sticks blushes. Both of them are unique colors to my collection. We have this formula that is unique. We have this formula that is unique. I mean, I feel like this formula is unique as well. You know, we also have my Bare Minerals blush. This is just overall a formula and color that I really love. And funny enough with this one, because the formula is so different from these two, I've loved both of these for so long without ever really doing much comparison. And honestly, I would continue to own both of these for years because the formula and the experience of using these are so different that I can enjoy and justify having both. And now after this video, I've come extra. I mean, a couple of products have gone up my rankings. This formula is probably the most underrated blush in my makeup collection. It's also like from one of the cheapest brands at the drugstore. This is 
the most amazing powder formula blush. It felt identical to the Patrick Ta. I swear, they this company just just duped it out, which is what I, I didn't realize it at the time of buying it. If you live in Canada, go check out these blushes, the Perfect Butter blushes. Amazing. And lastly, I think there's still some novelty with my Franken blush because I made it. So this is still going to be fun for a while, at least. I did know that my bronzers were similar, but I don't think, oh, that's not a bronzer, but I didn't think I fully understood how similar they were. I can't just, if you have this blush or sorry, this bronzer or this bronzer, let me know how you feel about the finger feel of these. If you're like, Shauna, I've never stuck my finger in my bronzer. Go do it. Go take your bronzer out right this second. If you have one of these two, pause this video, go put your finger in it, go swatch it on your arm and tell me what you think about these formulas because I I like them and I enjoy wearing both of them, but I didn't fully grasp how awesome the feel of these are. And then highlighters, you know, this was not a product that I was overly jazzed about because I don't care all that much about highlighter. This video was so much fun maybe even more fun than swatching all of my eyeshadow palettes because I guess maybe I would think that I would feel kind of sad with all of these dupes, but I still love my collection all the same, you know? And maybe I'm a little bit more excited because now I have a really, I have a much better understanding of how my blushes perform and how they feel. And with the eyeshadow palette video, by the way, I don't think I've ever been more informed about my eyeshadows and how they feel, their swatches, their capacity, their color payoff than I am right now. And now I'm like, wow, I have all this data about my blushes, bronzers, and highlights too. How incredible is that? Like, how incredible is it that we could have just so much knowledge at our fingertips that we don't actually go and utilize and play with? Anyways, that's it from me. I feel like I could ramble so much more. Let me know if you've ever swatched all of your blushes. What do you think about the formulas of the blushes that you do have? If you have any of these blushes that I have here, do you love them? Do you feel the same way that I do about the formulas I've talked about today? Do you hate <laughs> the blushes that I've talked about today? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of dying to know what you guys think about some of these formulas. Uh, and also, if you've ever swatched your blushes, bronzers, or highlights. What did you learn from doing that? Thanks for hanging out with me today in another day of Vlogmas. I hope you had fun uh, hanging out with me and I hope you stick around to see another video tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye.